So in the next slide, uh, we'll further discuss about uh, design queries which were raised by the users over the years uh, and we'll try to discuss how we can troubleshoot those uh, queries uh, as well. So uh, generally, conspan or, or precast pre-stress girder module uh, is, is used for uh, design of uh, uh, pre-tension girders. Uh, we, have an, we have a module wherein users can uh, an analyze and design uh, post-tension girders as well. We call it as uh, conbox. Uh, but if the user wants to uh, analyze and design a reinforced concrete beam, uh, is it possible to do that in conspan? Uh, there is no direct solution for that. Uh, we do have a workaround solution uh, wherein uh, wherein they have to go to analysis tab, uh, click on uh, project design parameter uh, button, and in the new window, if they go to moment and shear provision, uh, under moment method, there is an option called consider bottom tension steel contribution. So if the user, user checks this option, uh, uh, once this is done, the, the other thing the user has to do is they have to go to uh, pre-stressing tendon library uh, and there they have to create a dummy uh, zero tendon. Uh, uh, what exactly it means that the area uh, which is basically 0.167 or 0.153, uh, it needs to be reduced to 0 0.01 uh, and the user has to save that particular uh, tendon. Uh, and once the analysis is done and in the design uh, beam design tab, mm, uh, the user has to assign the strands, uh, no doubt. Uh, but uh, those uh, strands will not be taken into account uh, when the when the design of the beam is done, and only the uh, tension uh, reinforcement will be taken in, taken into account to design those beams. So this is not a direct solution, but a workaround solution to design uh, reinforced concrete beam. Uh, for, uh, this this slide we'll discuss about the debonding. Um, uh, the debonding generally uh, when the stresses are too high, uh, the uh, the designers generally try to debond the uh, tendons. Uh, so there are limitations as per Ashto code. Uh, so how to bypass uh, the debonding strand limit? Uh, for example, if the limit is forty five percent as per Ashto code, uh, then user has to go to material tab. Uh, under uh, maximum auto debonding percentage uh, per row or, and total percentage, uh, they have to change it to 100%. Um, and and max, uh, maximum debonding percentage is basically set according to ASHTO LRFT code. So this is the procedure uh, how they can bypass the debonding strand limit. Many times users have requested whether they can uh, whether whether they can print and save the strand pattern uh, which 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 they have created in the strand pattern uh, uh, definition of the dialog box. Uh, is it possible to print them uh, that the template the strand pattern and the strand template? Uh, yes, it can be done. We have an option called uh, a wizard uh, under uh, uh, in the strand pattern dialog box. Uh, if the user clicks on the wizard option. Um, uh, the uh, the new window will appear, uh, and uh, you and the user should be able to uh, right click and export that particular uh, strand pattern uh, to a, as a DXF, or they can copy and paste that uh, in the report uh, as well. Uh, so um, this is uh, in, in this slide. I would like to discuss more about uh, this this feature, which is quite useful. Uh, if the if if a user uh, or a designer is trying to uh, trying to design the beam with uh, multiple uh, multiple strand patterns, many times the users uh, when they, when they are designing they lose the strand pattern and and they they try to ask us if they can retrieve it or if they can if they can save it. So we have an option in the strand pattern uh, dialog box uh, called save load a strand pattern uh, where wherein the user has to check that option. Uh, and uh, once a strand pattern is modeled or, or defined uh, in that uh, window, uh, they can give a name to it. And if they click on save as, that particular strand pattern gets saved. Uh, later on, uh, if they want to reuse it, uh, they can click on the load uh, button and that uh, particular strand pattern gets loaded uh, in the window and the user should be able to check if the design works or not. So this feature uh, helps uh, if, uh, if the user uh, tries to define this strand pattern, uh, multiple strand patterns, uh, and save it in this particular library. Uh, and and if they have to uh, check multiple times uh, for the for the different dif uh, different patterns, then this this feature is quite useful to them. 
um, uh, do you, this is uh, this slide is related to uh, rebar pattern stirrups uh, and vertical shear table uh, many times we have seen uh, wherein sometimes the designers uh, uh, they, they they do they, there are some discontinuities between the start and end location of the stirrups so what happens is uh, the program will not be able to read that particular uh, location uh, and the program shows a zero value for the provided stirrup area in the uh, in the output table so how to get rid of this uh, we generally recommend the user to set the start value to the to be same as the preceding uh, end value uh, we we request them to not to leave any discontinuities in between uh, end and start value so once there is no discontinuity then the program will show uh, the area provided uh, value in the table uh, and that should fix it so in the in the next uh, slide uh, we'll discuss about some other common queries uh, which we have encountered uh, over a period of time through uh, communities or through the users uh, or through chat so many times uh, we we have this uh, we have this feature in the program uh, generally what happens in the material tab uh, once we uh, provide the properties uh, to the beams uh, those uh, properties gets assigned to all the beams uh, in all the spans uh, but if the user wants to assign uh, or customize uh, by assigning individual uh, different properties for different beams and they want to save it uh, currently uh, if they try to do that in the libbridge program uh, it's not possible uh, to save uh, the individual properties uh, for the indiv uh, for the different beams the user has to go to show uh, preferences and they have to check this option retain beam level changes so once uh, when this uh, option is checked uh, all the all the properties which are assigned to each individual beam gets saved and those properties will be used for the uh, design purpose it's quite useful tool uh, when customization is uh, required uh, but in the other case, uh, if if all the beams uh, customization uh, is done, and if the user doesn't want to uh, have uh, different properties for different beams, and if he wants to keep the same um, uh, same properties for all the all the beams, uh, so how to do that? How to how to change it? Uh, first thing they have to verify that the section properties are not set at the uh, beam level. Uh, and then they have to go to show preferences, and if they uncheck this retain beam level, uh, changes, uh, then uh, then then for all the re all the beams, the same material properties will be assigned, uh, and and the individual customization for each in each individual beam goes away. Uh, so let's uh, discuss about the camber and deflection values. Uh, there is one option for live load. Generally, the program shows for a uh, dead load and diaphragm sulfate. Uh, that we show the deflection and camber values for live load. Um, sometimes we don't report the live load deflection values. The reason being that uh, we have a separate option uh, for live load deflection. If the user uh, user can include or exclude that particular deflection in the output report, if the user checks the include live load deflection option in the loads tab, uh, then the program will show uh, the live load deflection value in the camber and deflection report. If that option is unchecked. Uh, then, uh, the, or, or not included, then in the camber deflection report, uh, the user won't be able to see the live load uh, deflection values, but he should be able to see the uh, dead load uh, deflection values and camber values. Uh, so when the there are cases wherein uh, the user tries to verify the composite section properties uh, by through his hand calculation. Uh, and uh, what if the user cannot verify the composite section properties? Uh, there is a possibility that we have an option uh, in the geometry tab, uh, wherein the user can uh, ignore haunch, uh, you know, uh, ignore haunch uh, while calculate the composite section properties. If that option is checked or unchecked, uh, uh, the composite section properties uh, change, and and that that can be verified uh, in the output report. Uh, whether, whether this option is checked or unchecked. Uh, similarly, uh, it's a say it's a it's a uh, it's related to the haunch uh, inclusion of haunch. Uh, why composite section properties are different than expected? If the user is expecting some composite properties, and if it is something different in the report, uh, as I mentioned in my previous slide, uh, user has to uncheck 
ignore haunch uh, for composite section properties uh, and uh, and he should be able to verify the uh, the uh, area moment of inertia and other uh, information in the output report. Uh, so finally, uh, for the ratings, uh, how how do I find the analysis and design reports uh, used for the rating? Uh, many times the user wants to see uh, same kind of analysis and design to be used for rating as well. Uh, generally, the analysis and design results uh, are shown under design reports, beam tabs, and results. Uh, and if they want, if they want to see the same thing under uh, rating. Uh, report as well, then the user needs to set under design the analysis factors and design parameters to be same as those set under rating parameters. So for rating, we have an op we, have, we have a window called uh, rating parameters where the user can customize a uh, lo lot of these factors uh, as per the project requirement, but these factors should be same uh, in the analysis tab, uh, analysis factor and design parameter dialog box as well. So once all these factors are same, they should be able to see the similarities uh, between the design report and the rating report as well. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and share it with others. If you want to see more like it, please consider subscribing to this and Bentley's other channels. Thank you and see you next time.